It's TK Friday on the Joy of Editing with Dave Cully, and today we'll be exploring Orton. That is the Orton effect. We all love the Orton effect, you know, that dreamy, ethereal glow that it gives our images. Well, we're going to take a look at both Orton actions inside of the TK plugin for Photoshop. You don't want to miss this one. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Cully. It is TK Friday. I love TK Fridays. It's my favorite day of the week, and I hope you do, too. Today, we're going to be exploring Orton. You know, not that Orton hears a who, Dr. Seuss, but the Orton effect, you know, that dreamy glow we can add to our images, and it looks good on landscape images, flower images, you know, portraits, anything. It's a great effect. There's two different types of Orton effects in the TK plugin for Photoshop, a basic Orton effect and a smart Orton effect. We're going to dive into those today. I'm going to show you all the different things you can do, and I'll show you a couple new twists that you can do with the Orton effect. Plus, I have downloadable PDF notes for you, which will be a great reference guide. If you forget all the different things you can do with the Orton effect, you're going to have that as a reference. So don't forget to download that. You'll find that in the description below this video. By the way, if you don't yet own the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, you can click on my affiliate link found in the description below this video. Just click on that link. It'll take you to the TK web store where you can purchase the TK8 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. And if you use my promo code DK15, you'll save 15% off your entire purchase. And when you do that, you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. And for that, I truly thank you. We're going to start out with the basic Orton effect. This image comes from Peter Allum. I've edited this image before. This is the edited version of the image on a TK Friday. I'll link that video at the end of this video in case you want to go and take a look and see how I edited this image. You'll find both Orton effects inside of the TK actions. Now you'll notice I have two panels open up here, the combo panel and the TK8 CX panel. On the CX panel, I leave my actions open so I can grab them anytime that I want. It's very convenient. And then I have my combo panel and all the buttons that I can use in here for different uh, features I want to use from the TK8 plugin for Photoshop. I like this setup, especially if you have a uh, desktop computer with a decent sized monitor and you have the real estate to do it, it's nice. It speeds up your workflow because you have your actions right here. You have your combo panel here. And then I have my actions down here in the My Actions panel. I'm going to go ahead and apply the Orton Effect action. Now, being the fact that I have two panels open, I can just click here. But if you only have one panel open, just click on TK Actions, and you can grab it there. But I'm clicking on Orton Effect. The Gaussian Blur dialog comes up. It defaults at 10 pixels. I'm going to cancel that for a second because... If you're somebody that likes formulas, you're going to love this. Tony Kuiper was talking to me the other day, and he was giving me a formula. And that is, a lot of times we don't know where to set that Gaussian blur at, and here is the formula for that. If you come up here to the Combo or CX panel, click on Size. It'll give you the size of your image in pixels. Now you can change this. There's a drop down here. I have mine set for pixels, and that's what I recommend you do, because what you can do take 9504 pixels times 6336 pixels and you come up with a little over 60 million pixels that's 60 megapixels multiply 60 by 1.25 that's 125 percent and that'll equal 75 pixels of gaussian blur and I don't need image size anymore. I just needed it for that number to get our megapixel count of our image. And that works on any image that you have. I don't need image size anymore, so I'll just click Cancel. And now let me click on Orton Effect. And I'll just type in 75 for 75 pixels and click OK. Now I find that to be a pretty strong effect. But first notice we're on the Orton Effect group that's active. So come up to Opacity. You can click this little drop down here and start to drag that opacity back. And then stop at a point that you think looks good. And I'm thinking maybe right around here, like 62%. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's one way of doing it. And another thing we can do is use luminosity masks. So what I'm gonna do is reset this back up to 100%. 
Make sure you have the group active for the Orton effect and come up here and click this button to go into layer mask mode. And this is very handy if you want to sample out different types of luminosity masks on that whole Orton effect group. And the luminosity masks that I like to try is like a lights one. This will only apply it to lights in the image. And you can see here's the before and here's the after. And you can see there's that mask right there. Now, of course, you can click this X here and see what it looks like without the mask. And there it is with the mask. So you might say, do I like that? Or the other luminosity masks that I like to try are midtones. Now, midtones will protect the highlights and the shadows from getting the effect. So let's try midtones. And I like midtones. Let's try them. Here's midtones one. Here's the before. And here is the after. If we want a stronger effect, we can go to midtones two. Here's the before. And here is the after. I think I want it even stronger. Let's try midtones three. And that's better. Here's the before. And here's the after. Now, if you wanted it even stronger, you also make sure that the layer mask is active and you could take the density and start to slide this to the left and see you can increase that. So that's another adjustment that you can do. You can work with the density. And you also have, if it's too strong, you have this opacity here. So you can just click the drop down and then just pull this back a little bit if it's just a little bit overboard. So again, here we go. Here is the before and here's the after. But that's how you can work with luminosity masks. And you could try dark's luminosity masks as well. But the layer mask mode is really great to sample out these different luminosity masks. And don't forget about the red X on the combo and CX panel because you can disable the layer mask and see what it looks like without the layer mask and then click it again and with the layer mask. Now I have one more thing to show you, one more way that we can alter the Orton effect. And let me go ahead and get rid of this layer mask here by clicking this button right here. And now we have the full effect and let's take my opacity and take it back up to 100%. So now we have that full effect on here. Now this is a hand painted method of just adding the effect to certain areas of the image. So what we can do here is on this Orton group, click on the black mask button right here and put a black mask on it. Now get your brush, your paint brush, and make sure you have white paint. So click on your white paint brush. And I like to start out with a nice soft edge brush at around 50%. You can alter it and change it if you need to. I'm going to start out and just paint it like I don't want it on the tops of these mountains. They're nice and sharp and I don't want it there. So I can just kind of like paint it over this area in here with that nice soft edge brush, which will really blend really well and maybe up into here. And I'm going to get this whole area down in here over to here. And I might do another application here. So I have not lifted my brush at all. Okay. And so now I'm going to apply another... 50% pass over here. It won't add up to 100%, but it will get close, probably more like 75% of that effect. So I'm just going to paint it down here. So, you know, roughly around 75% here, like 50% up in here. And now I'm going to take it down to about 20%, make my brush a little bit larger, and just paint it on the sky. Just kind of blending into the mountaintops a little bit, like right in here, all through here. So this is hand painting on the Orton effect. Wherever you want it, you can make it stronger in certain areas and less strong in others. And if you look at my mask right here, and if we want to see what my mask looks like, if we click the double arrow button, we can see that's my mask that I hand painted. Click it again, we can see the image. Now here is the before and here is the after. And if you've overdone anything, I may have bled into this mountain up in here. I can switch to a black brush and let's take that up to like 70%. So maybe just allow a little bit to be on there and I can just paint off any of that Orton effect up in here with that nice soft edge brush that will blend really well. And I think that's good. So here is the before and here's the after. And don't forget about this opacity slider. If you went too strong, you can ease off on that if you need to. I do like the basic Orton effect for like hand painting. That's what I use it mainly for for these local adjustments because it starts out, if I disable this mask, as you can see, it starts out, it's a pretty strong effect. 
But by brushing it on at various opacities, you can get some really nice results and only apply it where you need it. I went ahead and reset the image. So now we're just working on the original image. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the Smart Orton effect this time. So you're going to find it here. This is my CX panel. It's already opened. Here's Smart Orton. If yours isn't open or you're using the combo, click on the TK Actions button and then click on Smart Orton. And now we have the Gaussian blur. So we need to set that. It defaults at 10. So remember that formula. Multiply the width times the height of the image in pixels. And that comes up with an amount of megapixels. Multiply that times 125%. And that will give you the amount of pixels that you use for the Gaussian blur radius. Now that size could vary from image to image. I'll go ahead and type in 75 for the radius and click OK. And there we go. There is the Smart Orton. Now, as you notice, it doesn't look quite as strong as the regular Orton. Here is the before and here is the after. Now, it looks really good right out of the gate, but there's a lot we can do with it. It's not called Smart Orton for no reason at all. There's a lot of adjustments we can make. And let me show you. Let's start off with the most obvious, and that is the overall group opacity. So we can click on the drop down on the opacity, and we could pull this back if it's too strong. So that's one thing that we could do. Now I'm going to say all these layers in here are set to 100% opacity, with the exception of the unblur layer. And this unblur layer deals with how sharp or blurred the image is. We'll get to that in a little bit. But we're going to start out with, and let me expand this a little bit so we can see the names of these layers. And I'll go ahead and fit the image back to the screen size. The first thing I want to start with is shadows and highlights. We can control the shadows and highlights. Now, if our shadows are too dark, we can click on this layer and simply come up here to opacity. And if you drag this to the left, you can lighten up those shadows. So you can get a setting that you like. So that's some nice control. And as far as highlights, let's come to the highlights layer and click it, make it active. And now for the highlights, we can reduce the highlights with the opacity by just dragging this to the left. Okay. And now we can see we can darken up those highlights. So we have some control there. So shadow and highlight adjustments are right here. Shadow blur, which deals with shadows and then highlights. And then we have unblur. Now this is a good one. Because, let's click on this one, it defaults at 40%. If you come to this opacity and start to move it to the right, you can sharpen up your image. And that gives you a lot of nice control. Or if you move it to the left, you can add more blur. So depending what you want, you can adjust. I want a little bit more sharpness here. So I'm going to take it to like maybe 45%. So let's take a look. So far, here's the before and here's the after. Now there's still more that we can do. And the next thing I want to do is adjust the contrast of the image. So if we click on this layer, now this is a curves adjustment layer. And with this curves adjustment layer, we can go ahead and, you know, add like a little S curve here to increase the contrast a little bit maybe. So we can add some contrast in there if we feel we need it. So there's a lot of control so we can work with shadows highlights, the amount of sharpness in the Orton effect, and we can affect the overall contrast of the Orton effect. And then finally, let's look here at the shadow blur layer. Now this layer is a smart object and it has a Gaussian blur smart filter in it. That means we can double click on Gaussian blur and we could change its amount. There's our radius that we set to 75%. Now you could come here and play with it. You can change it, make it less. Increase it. You know, you can do whatever you want. I'm going to type 75 again, but you have all those areas of adjustment. And don't forget about this one too. If you feel that you don't like the way the Gaussian blur was set, you can come back and reset it. You can't do that with the basic Orton, but you can here. So that's a nice added feature. So we have a lot of control in here. And don't forget, we can also put a layer mask on the group. So let me click on the Smart Orton group and go into layer mask mode again by clicking this button right here. And we could sample out some luminosity masks. For instance, we could try lights one and just add it to the lights, or you know, we could try, let's try like a mid tones two. 
There it is on Midtones 2. Here's Midtones 3. Now, I find, I'll be honest with you, I don't use luminosity mass on the um, Smart Orton that much because you have all of those adjustments in there. But there's times and occasions where I feel the need. I'm going to X out of here, and I don't want this on here. So you could just come up here in the Combo or CX panel, click this button, and you can delete that layer mask. So don't forget that you have that too. Once you get your Orton set up to the way you like it, you can also come up here in the Converse CX panel, you know, and put a black mask on that group. And then you could go ahead and paint on that. Just paint, paint the Orton effect wherever you want it with a white brush at various opacities. So you have that too. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that black mask for now. You got to love that Smart Orton. Hey, let me know in the comment section below what you think about Orton effects and the Smart Orton and so on. Let me know. And I have one more image to show you. One more thing about the Smart Orton. I'll be working on this flower image. Now let's figure out what kind of a Gaussian blur radius we're going to need for Smart Orton. So remember, what I like to do is come up here to size. This is an iPhone image, by the way. So let's click on size. This image is 3024 pixels by 4032 pixels. I don't need image size anymore, so let's click on cancel. And now let's click on Smart Orton. Now let's use our formula to set the Gaussian blur pixel amount. If we multiply 3024 pixels by 4032 pixels, we come up with a little over 12 million pixels. So roughly a 12 megapixel file size times 1.25 or 125% equals 15 pixels for our Gaussian blur radius. I'll type in 15 and we'll click OK. So there we go. Here is the before and here's the after. I'm not going to adjust all these other adjustments. I'm only interested for this last thing I want to show you, and that is fine tuning the blur using the unblur layer. Let's come to the unblur layer. Now here, there's three steps here. So I want you to look at the image and find the area that you want to be the sharpest. In my case, I want the center of the flower to have the most sharpness. So I'm going to take this opacity and start to drag it to the right to sharpen up that center of the flower to an area that I think looks really good. And I may take it up to right about here, like 75%. Secondly, we want to add a white mask to this layer. So come up here to the Combo or CX panel and click this button right here. That puts a white mask on it. And then all you need to do at this point is get a black brush and now we're going to paint on, I'm going to use like 50%. It's a good starting point, 50% opacity on your brush. So make sure you got a black brush. If you don't, you can just click this button right here. And I'm going to get a decent sized brush here. And I'm going to change my opacity to 50%. I'm just going to type 5. That gives me 50%. That's a shortcut. And I'll just paint on the Orton effect, staying away from the center of the flower, adding a nice dreamy glow, just like this. I'm not lifting my brush. And I'm just going to paint that right on. And then on this area right here in this petal that's sticking out, I would like it to be a little sharper and make my brush smaller. I'm going to switch this over now to a white brush and bring back some, at 50%, bring back some of that sharpness just on this portion of the flower here. Nice soft edge brush there. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, no Orton effect, and here's after, smart Orton. Now with this technique, fine-tuning the blur using the unblur layer, we were able to use the opacity on the unblur layer to set the maximum sharpness for the area we wanted sharp. In my case, it was the center of the flower. Next, I added a white mask to the unblur layer. And then with a black brush, and I started at 50%, you can vary it. You know, you can make it less or more, whatever you want. And then I just painted with black paint over the area that I wanted to bring that ethereal glow the Orton effect too in a stronger way with that black brush so I really like this technique so as you can see this smart Orton gives you a ton of possibilities and of course I could come here to shadow blur and pull this opacity back and that'll let me reduce a bit of the shadows to say maybe right about here and then I could come to highlights and see if I want to reduce highlights let's see Click on opacity, drag this back a little bit. Now nah, I'm going to leave that just the way it is. And if I wanted to add some contrast, I could come up here. And of course, I could come up to the 
Orton group, and if the overall effect's too strong, I could pull this opacity back a little bit if I wanted to, maybe something like that. Now here's the before and here's the after. Now hopefully after today's tutorial, you know a lot more about the Orton effect. We looked at the regular Orton effect and the smart Orton effect, and I used them both. I like the regular effect, the more simplified one when I just want to hand paint on my Orton effect in specific areas of the image. And I really like the Smart Orton when I really want to get in there and make a lot of adjustments just to really bring that Orton effect to the way I want it to be. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. Don't forget to download the PDF notes. It's a great guide to keep as a resource to do some brush up on the Orton effects, both the regular and the Smart Orton. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get a notification. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing!